The success of the civil rights movement in the 1960s encourages other minorities to assert themselves. I grew up in Miami and I was about, I don't know, eight or nine years old at the time. I was fascinated by this sign over the water fountain that said colored and I thought that water of different colors was going to come out of the fountain. And when I went to that fountain and touched it, my babysitter came running over, said, don't touch that, that's dirty, that has germs on it, that's for colored people. Uh, that's roughly 1961, 1962. That's the beginning of the 1960s. Uh, by the end of the 1960s, which we historians end in 73 or 74, that's something that you wouldn't find. More and more during the 1970s, groups of Americans start to discover themselves and to organize around specific kinds of group identity to see themselves as a distinct minority with distinct grievances, rights, and needs, and to assert proudly that form of identity. And so you, you see the kind of echoes of black power, of minority cultural nationalism across the United States. Few minorities have deeper or more justifiable grievances than Native Americans. American Indians did not achieve citizenship en masse until 1924 with the Indian Citizenship Act. So from the very founding to 1924, you have a group of people who are viewed as essentially uh, aliens or wards, essentially. That was the terminology that the United States used. Just as the war was ending, there was talk of terminating the formal treaty and executive order relationships of the United States with the various tribes so that there would be no government-to-government -government relationship. For much of the post-war period, the federal government seems determined to force Native Americans into the mainstream of American life. And the idea was to set them up with uh, positions, jobs, so that they could become mainstream Americans and have economic opportunities. And it worked to the advantage of some Indian people, at least initially. But what often happened was the initial job broke down and people ended up going unemployed and living in ghettos. And it separated people from their families, from their languages, from their cultural events, ceremonies that uh, took place on the reservation. So it was difficult for lots of, of families. Mimicking the civil rights movement, a group of Native Americans occupies Alcatraz Island to bring attention to their plight. I remember George Horse Capture saying that the landing on Alcatraz Island was like the landing of the Marines at Iwo Jima, that there was something that dramatically had changed. But then comes the incident known as Wounded Knee. It begins with the murder of a Lakota man in Custer County, South Dakota. The decision was made that the person who had murdered this young man was going to get off uh, very lightly and it wasn't even going to be considered a murder. So the uh, AIM people moved into uh, Custer County and, and began threatening the county officials for what they had done. Things became very heated and the AIM people decided to retreat to the Pine Ridge Reservation to a small place that was symbolic of Native American history, a place called Wounded Knee. Then they proclaimed themselves an independent Oglala Sioux Nation in defiance of the United States and the clash came at Wounded Knee. It ended in tragedy with some FBI people dying, but also a number of Native people dying. 